Good morning, Chairman Comer, Ranking Member Maskin, Raskin, and members of the committee. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you all today. I'm here because there is an urgent need for us to understand the impact that social media companies are having on our democracy. I will be very clear. I was not involved in the decision around Hunter Biden's laptop, but I was involved in decisions that were made leading up to, during, and after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. If we are going to talk about social media in the government, we need to talk about Twitter's failure to act before January 6th. I am here to tell you that doing nothing is not an option. If we continue to do nothing, violence is going to happen again. My background is as a trained lawyer and journalist, and my expertise over the past decade has been in the areas of media, technology, law, and policy, with a particular focus on social media and free expression. I joined Twitter in 2019, and by 2020, I was the most senior expert on Twitter's US safety policy team. My team's mission was to protect free speech and public safety by writing and enforcing content moderation policies around the world. These policies included things like abuse, harassment, hate speech, violence, and privacy. So if no other algorithm or no other human could decide if a tweet violated my team's policies, the safety team policy acted as the final moderators. If a high profile individual like any member of this committee or President Trump tweeted something controversial, it was sent to my team's desk. Every day, we had to decide whether a particular piece of content equated to yelling fire in a crowded theater. My work at Twitter and subsequently at Twitch put me in the middle of key events in history. What I've learned from them is that social media played and continues to play a role in these events. And two years after January 6th, we still need to better understand the role that Twitter played in order to prevent it from happening again. So what do we need to understand? First, Twitter's leadership bent and broke their own rules in order to protect some of the most dangerous speech on the platform. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what happened in the months leading up to January 6th. During this time, my team worked to try to minimize the threat of violence that we saw coming. After President Trump instructed the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by in a debate, we considered the danger that that statement would have if it was tweeted. So we crafted what we called a coded incitement to violence policy to address dog whistles like this. Instead of approving it, management bent over backwards to find ways to not approve it. On January 5th, when the policy was still not approved, I led a meeting where one of my colleagues asked management whether someone was going to have to get shot before we were allowed to take down tweets. Another colleague looked up live tweets and read them to management to try to convince them of the seriousness of the issue. Still, no action was taken. On the morning of January 6th, I sent Twitter lawyers a message warning them that our team was hamstrung by leadership. Two days later, when it looked like it was going to happen all over again, I asked management whether they wanted more blood on their hands. Only then did they act. The second problem is that there is way too much power concentrated in the hands of too few. With January 6th and many other decisions, content moderators like me did the very best that we could. But far too often, there are far too few of us and we are being asked to do the impossible. For example, in January, 20th, January 2020, after the US assassinated an Iranian general and the US president decided to justify it on Twitter, Management literally instructed me and my team to make sure that World War III did not start on the platform. No person, people, or company should have that kind of unchecked power or that kind of responsibility. The modern day public conversation should not be susceptible to the whims of any one individual or any one company. Fixing the systemic issues that lead to bad decisions is not going to be easy. But people like me who have been in the trenches can help lead the way. But I must say, coming forward and offering this information is risky and it is difficult. Doxing and harassment are real and people are afraid to tell what they know. So we need to make sure that there are protections for those who speak the truth. 
We need to create space to hear from people on the front lines. We need to give them protection so they can share their experiences. Only then can we begin to understand the full scope of the problem and to find solutions. There is far too much at stake for us to do nothing. Thank you. Thank you all. Excellent opening statement.